Hello my darlings, and welcome to a new episode of After Dark Fairy Tales. I have a new one for you all, and the title of this one is called The Bartender. This wonderful tale was written by a very gifted author, and her name is Rosista Guardiadiska. I sure hope I pronounced her name correctly. Uh, Rosista's story was first published on Ritzy, and uh, I'm very honored that she wants me to narrate it. I'm glad I get to share with you all tonight, and uh, I read it and enjoyed it, and I hope you all will as, as well. To all my new subscribers, I'd like to say, welcome to After Dark Fairy Tales. I'm glad you're here. I want to thank all of you for your likes and your comments and enjoying the stories and uh, my narration as well. So, I'm going to get right into Rosista's story. You guys ready to hear the bartender and find out what it's all about? Well, here we go. The Bartender by Rosista Guardiadiska. She left no traces as she pulled his remains down to the cellar. Deep in her secluded den, she set his empty shell of a body among the rest and fell into a long sleep. A few hours earlier, it was dead. People had spent all their wages during the annual beer festival a week ago. The long-anticipated weekend had sucked all pockets empty of every spare coin, and now the whole town was buried at home with their families pretending to be enjoying each other while secretly longing for the crisp froth of a fresh ale pint. The drunken duck was dead. Rob looked like the prey of a big tooth alien creature that had chewed him vigorously and then distastefully spat him out. He wished the alien had eaten him instead of leaving him barely alive with this thundering storm of a headache. He knew he shouldn't have drunk last night, but even he was getting tired of his own lies. He was lying on the chair more than was sitting, one arm spread towards the floor, holding a dirty polishing towel, the other resting on the table, holding a large cup of coffee gone cold. The jukebox was in a gloomy mood and was steadily gone from depressing rock songs to the dreary and ludicrous musical poetry of a modern pop singer. The new age artist was describing how to successfully commit a suicide if one found himself in the stereotypical case of unshared love. Rob growled incomprehensibly, staggered to his feet, threw the cloth over his shoulder, and with the walk of a shot deer, he went to the jukebox, unplugging it harshly from the wall and shutting it up abruptly. It is so empty here that not even the boss could possibly care about the stupid jukebox, Rob thought, as he was dragging himself behind the bar. Oh, fuck it, he announced as he poured himself the first pint of the day. He drank half of it with one thirsty sip. He spent a moment savoring the incredible taste of the first pint, even though he had been drinking till a couple of hours ago. Maybe tomorrow I'll have a dry day, he considered, and laughed. He rolled a cigarette, using a bit of cardboard for a filter. He donated all his filters last night to a busker on the high street, and it was a mystery to him as to why he had done so. Some kind of a drunken generosity, he supposed. A laugh bounced off the pub silence again. He smoked in haste. It was early, but the sun was unforgiving of Rob's current state and burned right through his skull, squeezing every last living brain cell that he hoped he still had. Back inside, safe and cool. Now what? I could clean, he thought. He laughed. Don't be stupid, Rob, he muttered to himself and went for a piss. While he was drawing diagonals with his urine, Rob heard the unmistakable sound of the doorbell. Could you not wait a few more moments? He immiserated while buttoning up his jeans. Morning, he voiced with false cheeriness as he walked out of the toilet. 
who went behind the bar and grabbed an empty ale glass to polish it in a phony pretense that he was keeping busy. What can I get you? he asked. Tomato juice with some garlic powder, celery sticks, and a bit of ginger, please? A passive and flat female voice replied. Rob looked up at his first customer of the day. She had a lovely profile with a little chip nose, which he found very attractive. Pale curls were neatly resting on her shoulders, and the blue silk scarf was only enhancing their lack of color. Nice, he thought. Nice enough. Nicer than most women around here lately. Definitely nicer than that fat Hannah chick that he screwed last night behind the broken ship tavern. Now that was a mistake. Fuck it, he comforted himself. Right away, miss. He turned and crouched to search for celery in the fridge below the bar. There were a couple of almost rotten sticks in the back, but he thought he could pull it off. He put a few ice cubes in a glass, poured some tomato juice, added water as there wasn't enough juice, threw the dull sticks inside as well as a straw and pushed the drink towards the flat voice. Then he set the garlic powder and ground ginger by the drink, feeling like a great accomplishment was achieved today. She still looked out of the window. There you go, he smiled. Thank you, flat voice, followed by... Do you have any Angostura bitters? No, sorry, we ran out, apologized Rob, while he actually wanted to say, we've never had it, and we don't intend to ever get it. That's okay, I hate it, the flat voice announced, and Rob stared at her unknowingly how to respond to this bit of information. Annual Nut House open today, ladies and gentlemen, he thought. They love it, though. It is an absolute delight for them. They quite like garlic, too, so don't worry about it. Only then did she turn around, and at this instant, Rob left all his sanity behind. Now convinced that last night involved more than mere alcohol and bad sex, the right half of her face was bruised purple, swollen and wet with ooze. The hair on that side was soaked in pus, and in the morning sunshine, Rob could see the horrific glister of blood on it. From a few spots on her skin, black secretion was hanging thinly. Rob felt an unpleasant warmth plowing up his stomach. No, not secretion. He looked, affirming his doubting eyes. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, the nut house is open for visitors today. He was sure now, as he grasped what he was looking at. Numerous tiny leeches were squirming from her skin. Thirsty little fellows, Rob thought, astonished at his bartender politeness that was keeping him from emptying his guts on the polished bar counter. He was doing his best to look casual and relaxed, professing the normality of this Monday morning. The woman reached two nails towards one of the wriggling black fellows, and with a keen popping sound, she pulled it off of her, droplets of blood seeping down her distorted cheek. She rested it carefully on the bar, took the garlic powder, and shook some of it on her index finger. Then she carefully rubbed it on the round, empty hole and immediately reattached the leech there. Rob swallowed a bit of acid back down, He heard a tiny squeak of pleasure as it restarted its gulping job. It won't hurt. Don't be worried, the flat voice was back. Without realizing it, he had stepped back, leaning on the tall display shelf of alcohol bottles behind him, and as he gave a small twitch, a Tia Maria bottle lost its balance and smashed on the tile floor. Shit! Rob stepped away from the quickly growing puddle of black liquor, sensing the sickly sweet coffee aroma rising from it. Of course, it couldn't be the Contrua, with only a sip left in it. It had to be this. He leaned on the bar, trying to escape the sticky splash, and as he was aiming to step over it, his elbow pushed the drink at the bar, 
Shit, shit, shit. Rob stared wide-eyed at the gray coat, now flooded with tomato juice. Well, not gray anymore, I guess. Now she will complain, and his boss will remind him, not for the first time, that he is lagging in his responsibilities. No chance for a promotion, huh, boss? I'm so sorry. He left the bar and hastened towards the unwelcomed customer, grabbing some filthy polishing towels on the way. He managed a sham look of great concern, but once he reached her, he found himself immobilized one more time by her wriggling side. She shifted with a sleek movement. Rob found himself thinking of a serpentine creature when she did that and had the ludicrous idea that there were no bones beneath her skin. She turned her eye slowly up towards him. How long has it been since he's seen pretty eyes like hers? Blue, with shimmering white and yellow threads. They reminded him of his school love, but she turned out to be a bitch. Rob remembered how she would tease him with her knowing hands during English classes, but then she would mock him in front of the others. Flop knob Rob. He grinded his teeth, remembering the words, remembering also how he would fantasize about her crushed head bleeding mortally against the wall, squeezing his flop knob Rob, how he wished to shut her up forever. But of course, he never did. In fact, he rarely did anything. Fuck it. Rob pulled out of the memory, feeling otherworldly. He didn't like that he had started thinking of these memories again. He wanted to go back behind the safety of the bar, but she wouldn't let him go. He only now became aware that she was squeezing his hand, her nails deep in his skin. He felt like she was mocking him, and he thought he heard her saying, Flop knob rob. She popped one leech off her skin again, and he stared at the black seeping hole. It was small, but looked deep. In the back of his mind, he wanted to leave, but on the surface, he was mesmerized by the crepsiscule blackness. He didn't see how the woman removed all the other leeches or how she gently lowered him to the nearby chair. He didn't see the thin, wiry fibers that stretched out of the dark wounds. He didn't feel how they wrapped around him in a cramped embrace, leaving no space for his nostrils and mouth to reach for air. Fuck it was his last thought. Well, did y'all like that one? I hope you did. (laughs) Was that crazy or what? Uh, It has some Twilight Zone essence to it, don't it? I read it and I was like, what is she? So, I guess it lets you decide whatever whatever the hell she is. Must be an alien, something. And leeches seem to like her. Poor Rob, huh? Jeez. You get drunk, hangover, and now you get killed. That's a shame. But I want to give all credit to the author, Rosista Guardiadisca. And uh, I put her link to her Ritzy page where you can check out her other stories as well. So please do. She wrote this nice one, and she got a few other nice ones that you guys can check out as well. So all credit to Rosista. Please check out her Ritzy page. And I'm glad I was able to share one of her stories to you all tonight. I hope you all enjoyed that one. I I enjoyed it. I Like I said, it reminded me of a Twilight Zone episode. (laughs) It was so weirdly good. And I thought it was pretty creepy. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys let me know what you thought about it. So I'll be back next time with another After Dark fairy tale for you all. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed this one. So until next time. Good night, my darlings.